the humiliation of being in Sydney with insufficient funds. This is where I grew up, you know, and without a secure roof over my head. It was so overwhelming that it was too much to think about. So basically, I laid on the floor for three days. It could be your mum, your grandmother, and in fact, in 30, 40 years, it could be you. Homelessness can be sleeping on the streets, but also it, it can mean not having a secure roof over your head, and maybe having to move from couch to couch. You just can't plan ahead because you don't know where you're going to be from one day to the next. And, and that's, that creates anxiety. It was, and it was very unsettling for me. My name is Kay, Kay Dolman. I had been a stay-at-home mum and, you know, involved in school activities, volunteering and, and doing a little bit of work and a little bits of cleaning, little bits of ironing, which I hate. Well, 2007 was the year of my divorce after 36 years of marriage. I found myself waking up from a bubble of feeling secure to a situation where I didn't have a secure roof over my head. And I knew that I couldn't continue living with family and friends. And it was such a deep pit of despair that I found myself in that situation. I had put myself in that situation. My friends, they had their home, their retirement, you know, their super. I, I was ashamed. I was ashamed. Yeah, it was a, it was a situation that, that I didn't think that I would ever be in. The idea of house sitting came to me and that became a reality and I, at least I had a bed to sleep in at night. My family and friends knew the situation. Yeah, it was, yeah, touched on a, on, a, on a sore spot. What I found was hard was not having a home to have them stay, you know, as we used to. Many, unfortunately, don't actually see themselves as homeless. Uh, they see themselves as having a, a bit of a problem and they're going to try and, you know, get through it. It's a growing issue and it's a growing issue for a few reasons. We've got uh, women entering older age now who haven't necessarily had a long time in the workforce with superannuation. Many have also spent a lot of time out of the workforce raising children, caring for other family members and find themselves in older age living in poverty. When you're trying to rent privately, if you haven't had the opportunity to purchase your own home during your life, you're at much greater risk of a housing crisis. And the research found that the largest growing group of women in this situation are conventional women who haven't necessarily had a housing crisis before but who have found themselves having a housing crisis or homelessness later in life. It's not something that I also consciously thought you could actually be a homeless person because without safe, tenable, secure housing, that's actually what I am and that comes as a real shock. I had never ever contemplated that this is somewhere that I would be in my lifetime. So I'm Penny, I'm 56 years old and currently I live in shared accommodation. Just going to have a cuppa. Mm. Would you oh, like a perfect, lovely cup of tea? Yeah, it's, it's the day for it, isn't it? It's cold it outside. I call myself fortunate in that I was able to rent a room here. However, that situation itself is very precarious person who offered me this space is in the same position that I am. So if the landlord sells, if the rent goes up, it's back to the situation of trying to find somewhere else to live. I had acquired a disability. I didn't enter the workforce at a younger age. Gender pay inequity meant that I had limited access to superannuation. Um, lower wages impacted on where I am now, combined with a relationship breakup later in life. All my bills came at once. My car, which I drive with hand controls, broke down and needed to be fixed. My rent was due. 
I could see no solution. I could see um, no glimmer of hope and I could see literally no optimism. And that really is not who I am as a person. The more I thought about it, the deeper I dwelled into that pit of darkness. Um, and for me, I was thinking, well, there's no option, so just don't be here. What needs to happen, I think, is a whole range of things, but for myself, um, public housing would be great. That is at a rent that I can afford. There's no point in finding somewhere to rent when all your income goes in rent. I think the federal government needs to take a really close look at the policy levers and ensure that they are putting in place policies that create affordable, secure housing. It's just not happening at the moment. There isn't a plan. We have a really, really strong emphasis on homelessness and ensuring that the money is provided to the states, and the government certainly does that through the National Partnership Agreement on Homelessness, uh, to see that we are addressing, in particular, one of the issues faced by those women. At the other end of the spectrum, um, it's encouraging as many women as we can back into the workforce so they are in receipt of the wage and ensuring that young women know that they need to start putting money away towards their retirement incomes so that they don't become one of those statistics. If I could go back to my younger self, what would I tell myself about this? I would say at the age of 18, I would have valued someone coming to college where I was then and giving a presentation or a speech about financial advice. Now, oh my golly, what I would do differently is to make goals, make goals and to have different goals and along the way. Seeing you again. Please take a seat. I speak to a lot of the children of my clients, so in their 20s when they first started working or maybe when they're a bit older and they're looking to enter into a, um, a, a long-term relationship. And the key things I say to them is, make sure you know where your money is. People hate the word budget as much as I hate the word diet. And, and that's the reality is that it's very similar to having a, a sensible eating plan and regular exercise. There is no magic bullet for losing weight and there is no silver bullet for setting your finances um, in order. It is hard work and it's regular and you start with baby steps. It is important that we're having discussions around gender equality when it comes to pay. Recognition that superannuation balances, there is a discrepancy there between uh, men and women who've worked for the same amount of time. Having these discussions and actually working with some real facts is really important in terms of furthering the debate around policy decisions. Well, certainly there are not enough women in Parliament and the Prime Minister commissioned myself along with Senator Linda Reynolds to put together a report to provide to our Federal Council to look at strategies that the Liberal Party can put in place to increase female representation. Being in affordable housing, having an affordable rent meant that I could save money and I could be part of the population in a normal way, in a respectful way. As soon as I was given this unit, it was like I was, oh, my home became my haven. And it's a place where I could just be me. I think given that we're talking about women who have in fact raised the next generation, who have given back to their communities, volunteered in their communities, I think we actually need to do a bit better by them. I was informed that I would probably be over 65 before I would receive any form of public housing. And that was breathtakingly shocking. Basically, I don't live, I don't live my life with despair or despondency, but I basically live it from day to day or week to week. <laughs>